is Jagmeer Singh back with another video of Kithia V5 and in this video I will get started with a little bit of simulation side as well as we know that Katia is a very powerful software and hence we can also do the simulation from the assemblies that we are making on daily basis and today I will be just showing the very basic joints that exist in Katia and also one of them that is the revolute joint and how it works so let's get started so we have the screen in front of us so I'm just going to click new and have a product double click I have the product I'm just going to insert new part well I will insert two new parts so right click components new part and I'm going to click no because they are asking us to define the origin I want to have two different origins so now we have part one and part two the first part I'm going to make is it's, it's a very simple part. It's nothing basically two cylind uh, cylindrical assembly that I will be showing you guys how I would personally make. So let's say I have one hollow cylinder and one solid cylinder and their assembly. I'm just going to randomly give them the dimensions as well 40 and 15 diameter. Let's go with 60. That looks better. I'm going to pad it to any random number, let's say 100. I have one part ready in front of me. Similarly, in the second part, I'm going to make second part, which is going to be a coincidental part with this. So that's why I'm just going to project it and use it as a reference. And because it's going to be solid, so it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to reverse direction and make that part to be let's say 70 millimeters so now I can see I have two parts so double click on the product which is the main assembly then you use the compass to move around the parts so now I can just move any part that I want to just click on that particular part and then just drag the compass don't drag it from the red point because that helps you to move the compass itself let's say it really doesn't matter where your compass is aligned unless it's by default you need to get the compass out of the default position and keep it anywhere it can be even on the plane but it's going to move the part that you're going to click on it so let's say right now my compass is sitting on this part so hypothetically people will assume that this is the part that will move if I move the compass but it's not true all the time until unless if I want to move this part and if I left click once now control it will move the upper part rather than the lower one although the compass is inclined towards the lower end similarly if I click on this one I have the freedom to move this as well until unless the constraints are applied and also it gives you the freedom it will automatically regenerate uh, for you to have the fixed position back again if you have applied permanent constraints or hard constraints also known so now what I'm going to show is a very simple but really innovative and also a great experience if you like simulation and how and why exactly these designs work and how they work and how people make sure that the practicality of engineering comes into play while designing as well so what you can do is because we already have two different parts what I'm going to do is first for this any kind of simulation we need to go to DMU which I'm already into DMU if you don't know where it is just click on start digital mockup and you have DMU, uh, DMU kinematics you click on it you'll get into and it's a product feature so make sure once you're going to make this shift double click on the product and then go and change it to dmu kinematics once you are into the DMU, uh, dmu kinematics the next step is to actually make constraints to make sure that you first have a proper assembly with hard constraints that you can simulate otherwise with soft constraints your simulation won't work so for the same we need to make sure that we have at least one fixed part before doing anything either you can just to start a mechanism 
or to make an assembly with constraint you can just simply click on the fixed anchor or fixed part and it will automatically ask for next new fixed part and show us that we do you want me to make a new mechanism and you will say new mechanism and it's asking for the name of the mechanism and I, I would say mechanism 1 by default and click OK and now it's asking me to click on a fixed part either this or this because we just have two parts so I'm going to assume that this is my fixed part left click on it now you can see the anchor symbol is right here so this is my fixed part whereas this is my movable part which can move freely yet so now you can see underneath the tree structure as well I have constraints which is the fixed part and under that as well applications which have mechanism mechanism 1 and DOF 0 and if I go underneath that as well I have many different options like joints commands fixed part law and speed acceleration so what does this define is DOF stands for degree of freedom if someone doesn't know it so degree of freedom is the different angle and the different motions that any assembly could possibly possess it the higher the number the more constraints and more moving ability an assembly have so in order to for us to play a simulation we need to have a fully constrained assembly with certain number of degree of freedom that is either one two or sometimes even three but those all one two or three degree of freedom should be controlled by the individual who is designing it I know it sounds kind of complicated to understand but what I exactly mean is you need at end of the day you need to have degree of freedom to be equal to zero in order to make the simulation but the only condition is you need to have degree of freedom equal to zero after you have applied all the constraints right now we don't we haven't applied any constraints so degree of freedom is always going to be zero irrespective of any assembly if you have any number of parts you, you, you might have 5, 10, 15 number of parts but if you haven't applied any uh, constraint to each other each of them with each other you will always have degree of freedom to be zero so it's basically from where we are starting with we want this end to be at the same point as well so we are starting with degree of freedom equal to zero but you will see that as I apply constraint between these two parts you will see the degree of freedom will go up but we need to make sure that at end of the day we need to come back to zero again so one of my part is already fixed so this is not going to move this part can move and also sometimes you might get confused so you can see that if I move this part this doesn't have any, anything with respect to it whereas if I move this part you can see the black color option yet it's not aligned with any any particular part so that's why it's not appearing but you can see the update option right here updation that's called update positions when I click it mechanism okay and that's perfectly fine because right now we haven't applied any constraints so it's not going to update it's just going to show us that there is something that I moved which was a fixed part so that's why it's not going to show any updation because it's fixed within the space not with respect to the part so if I want to make a simple mechanism in this case which is going to be with the revolute joint as I introduced initially so this is you can see the picture as well for the revolute joint it shows something like a water bottle cap if you think about it that one item is going to be fixed the other one can spin but it can spin at a particular distance with respect to the first one so what I mean is now I have two parts I can make an assembly and I want the assembly to be in such a way that I'm able to spin the top part but not the bottom part to make it more look alike I'm just going to convert this part which I have right now to be more of a cap by just making an extra circle over it and extruding it and the outer circle was 60 as far as I remember 60 
and I'm going to just pad it so that it looks more visually attractive. I'm going to make it 30, let's say. Yep, looks good. So now it's more of a cap kind of a thing on that particular shape. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a constraint between these two parts. Always click on the product twice, you'll come back to the DMU. And then you click on Revolute. Now it have options line one, line two, plane one, plane two. So don't get confused with this. So it's simply asking for us to specify the parts axis, which is going to be line one and line two. Something like coincide constraint that you apply. You can see in my other videos I've shown how to use constraints. So line one, you can simply click. It will automatically pop up. You just, you, you just need to click any circular surface of the part. Click once, click twice. So now you have to click the plane. So you want to make sure the planes that you want the parts to spin about. So let's say if I want this part and this part to be at a certain distance. Right now we don't know the distance but we can always click on offset and it will automatically calculate the distance that is between these two parts. Basically these two planes that we selected. And let's say if I want this cap to spin at 10 millimeters away from the top of the second part. I'm just going to enter 10 and click OK. So now you see that it automatically moved to 10 millimeter if I zoom in 10 millimeter and it is basically a constraint that I have made. So now we can see that degree of freedom have gone up by one. So it's not visually possible yet to see that where my constraint is applied and, and how it works. So you can see the joint as well, the revolute, you can double click on it. You can see it's giving us an option of angle driven. Angle driven means that if we want to manually drive the motion by ourselves in any given angle that we specify to the rotation of the cap with respect to the other part. So what I mean by that is, so before I go further, I'm going to show you a simple mechanism analysis that will help you to visualize better. So you click on mechanism analysis, which is right here, and you click on joint visualization, which is by default off. You can click on on, and you can see that this red mark is activated, which shows that these two parts are coincidental, but the top part, which is the cap, can spin along a certain angle if we want to drive. It's red in color right now because we are not driving it or no other force is driving it. So that's why once we want to drive it at a certain angle that we wish to, we can just simply double click on it and enter the values of the angle and it will turn green. And that's how you know that you are the one who is driving the angle. So for now, just click on joint visualization on and click close. It's going to stay and then you see we still have one degree of freedom and uh, as I told you in the beginning that we need to have zero degree of freedom in order to simulate the mechanism. So if I double click on this option, so now it's something like the same thing that I that popped up when I double click on uh, the joint, revolute one. So I click on angle driven. So now it's giving me an option of negative 360 degrees to 360 degrees. So if you properly zoom in, you, you can also see a blue color frisbee kind of a thing that appears. And also if you carefully observe this position, when I hover over it, you can see the cap spinning by a certain distance. Right? It's basically this direction. I'm going to specify, okay, I want to spin it zero to let's say 180 degree and I click enter so you can see that information says the mechanism can be simulated I click OK now I can see my degree of freedom have went to zero so and also the 
joint visualization turned green from red so now I want to make sure what exactly changes happened so how I can do it I can just click on simulation with commands because we already have command which is a revolute double click on it this is the command that we gave these two parts to drive with respect to each other and the command is revolute and to be very specific it's an angle so I'm going to click on simulation and I can just simply drag it and you can see that the top cap moves 180 degree with respect to the second part which is fixed as we started with that and also we can the next thing is to make actually a simulation out of it let's say if I want to make a video or a replay out of it how would I do that so I already have my degree of freedom to be zero so and also the dialog box appeared it showed us that our mechanism can be simulated so I'm going a step further click on simulation and it's asking me that which simulation object you want to choose we just have one mechanism so mechanism one click OK so now there are two dialog box that appears so now I just try to understand the procedure and the process because that's more important of how it's going to work because it's easy to make mistakes on this step so what I personally prefer is click on delete before you start anything double click you'll get rid of everything every past simulation that occurs or saves in the data once you click on insert you just see that there is no other change other than having many options other than that and if I click insert once again the bar will shift from 0 to 1 and it will consider or it will capture the capture the motion that you presented as a video and it will try to show it which in this case we don't have anything because we didn't make any movement on the command one so I'm going to delete once again In click once on the insert then you drag the command one you can see that the part is spinning now when I'm going to click insert now the motion that I recorded have been captured under the simulation if I go back drag it back and this is a speed control I'm going to play at 0 0.01 and this is the loop that you can just click once and click play forward you can see the spinning of it I can adjust the speed if I want to I'm going to play 0 0.04 you can see the cap is going to spin at a certain speed and this is how you can make your simulation I'm just going to click OK so now you have a simulation as well if you want to go further ahead you can make a uh, replay actually replay generate a replay whichever simulation step time I would say 0 0.01 is the best because that's the one that it actually captured everything in a good motion that you can see as well and that is captured under replay so now if I want to play it double click on it I'm just going to keep it on loop I can speed it up so so yeah that's how you make a replay and that's pretty much it for this video I would say and in other videos I will show you and go over uh, uh, different kind of joints that exist and also with more complex and more advanced level of part designs that require assembly and how the kinematic motion works with respect to them and it's going to be a beautiful journey just like we had with the surface design and also I, I will be keep posting more and more videos of surface design and also of designing different parts and objects which is, which is just a random idea that came into my mind which I will be making random different projects just as a freelance I used to but now I don't but I just want to keep myself creative and active in terms of designing so I choose to pursue it as well so thank you for watching and please do not forget to subscribe my channel thank you